Hey ladies and gentlemen, YouTube. Lloyd's well in here. Uh, I picked up this old squirrel cage fan off of a blower motor or a blower off of like a house or something. Uh, I got it for 50 bucks. But this thing right here moves some air. I just gotta close it off or put it up high somewhere my son can't get to it. And uh, the other fan I was using, <clears throat> it's a ventilator. Use it for painting and stuff. Uh, it's a Chicago Electric. Harbor Freight has them for probably 60 bucks, I think. Uh, that's what I've been using. So it's hard to hear me, that's why. But uh, <clears throat> this guy brought me a skid steer and like I always forgot to start the video, but you see it cracking there. What I'm trying to do is get as far as I can through it and the crack went all the way over and it turns up and then it goes this way. And <clears throat> I'm taking my grinder and turning it up on the end and trying to get all the way down, almost all the way through it, if not all the way through it, and then fill it back in. And then what I end up doing is more than likely, uh, these have uh, spot welds through holes right here to hold this piece on. So this is holding a lot of a lot of weight. So what I'll probably end up doing is uh, getting another flat piece of steel, drilling some holes in it, welding it, welding around the outside, bending it over, and then welding down here, probably like in a V shape or something, or maybe just straight square. I don't know. <clears throat> but and I'll probably drill some holes in it down here. Not in this, but the piece I'm putting on it. That way I can spot weld like these are right here. And I'm pretty sure that's what those are. They weld it right here around the edge and these are holes and then they fill in the holes with welds. <clears throat> but it's cracked right there and I don't know how it's just cracked right there because I don't see any cracks anywhere else. Uh, he told me to look it all over, but I mean, I don't see where any cracks go, so besides right here. Uh, so I'm going to get that down a little bit further, and then I'm going to weld this in, fill it in, grind it smooth, and then uh, if there's any bead left up, and then I'm going to make a plate for the top of this, weld it down, and that should fix that. And then he's wanting that, this little right there i guess it's a field nozzle or something it's loose or something he said somebody tried fixing it or something i don't know sitting there wiggling so i'm gonna see what that is next but odds are I, it looks like an oil field for maybe the hydraulics or the gearboxes for the uh, axles so that's what i'm gonna say that is and i don't want to start welding on it blow a hole through that and mess something else up but i'm gonna check it out if i can i'm gonna put a little bead around all the way around it and it's older skid steer it's a diesel uh <clears throat> he's got a lot of a whole lot of play though in his bushings because right here is where the it's been rubbing the side and that's something's been rubbing back here every time he lifts it Something's been rubbing right there. So, everything feels tight, but it ain't moving 1,500, 2,000 pounds right now. Or, you know, a couple tons, whatever. But uh, that's something probably have to be addressed next, but I, I'm not going to get into that. But this is this, and uh, next video, I'll try to throw them all together in one loop. But that's it. That's how it looks right now and sorry i didn't get it before but i'll try to go step by step all right guys get it ground down more uh pretty much all the way through it now and i'm gonna go back through and <clears throat> that right there is probably at least quarter inch material so i'm using a millimatic 252 quarter inch 035 you're looking at 19 320 so
I'll probably burn a little hot. And then run just a tad more wire. That's why that thing burns down in there and sets real good. Uh, but I'll hit that as soon as I get that welded up. Show you all what I got. Alright guys, uh, filmed most of the videos, I don't know, about three weeks ago. Uh, got this far and then when I got ready to weld, my welder messed up. Uh, every time I'd hit my spool gun on my aluminum gun, which I don't have it hooked up right now, I don't, I don't use it hardly, so I put it on the shelf over there. But ever since uh, I had my spool gun hooked up and I come over here, pulled the trigger, had everything set up, got ready to weld, and wouldn't do nothing. So come back over here and looked at it. Screen wasn't doing anything, didn't say it, pop up no errors, no nothing like that. And then, <clears throat> so I had this sitting up here somewhere and uh, or hanging over or something. And then I grabbed the uh, the spool gun, uh, the aluminum spool gun and pulled the trigger on it. Well then it started welding over here and the spool wire was coming out that spool gun. So I wasn't sure what to do. So I tried resetting it. I thought it was my gun. I put the old Miller gun back on there. Uh, this is my Tweco gun, but I put the Miller gun back on there, done the same thing, wouldn't do nothing. Uh, I tried to pull the trigger and reset the Miller Matic because if you hold the trigger down and then flip the power switch down there, it'll, it'll bring up a screen you can go to reset and reset all of your settings in it. And I did that a couple times, wouldn't do nothing. Well, long story short, I took it to a, a place close by. And uh, I figured, you know, four or five hundred dollar fix tops. You know, I was figuring maybe two or three hundred. Uh, they started going through it, and uh, they said lightning run in on it, which I turned my breaker off. I don't unplug it here though, but I do turn my breaker off. That's how I switch it off over there. Um, I turned the breaker's always been off, and I asked them, I said, you know, lightning can run in on a, a breaker. They said, yeah, even if it's off. They said it'll jump the poles and run through and he said odds are with all the lightning we've been having here the heat lightning and stuff he said that's what happened running on your machine fried two of your boards well it come up to be uh eleven hundred dollars to get my welder uh so that took pretty much most of my savings that my play money um and uh i wasn't too thrilled with it so uh now i'm back out here working on this um so uh what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get the grinder grind this back down get all this rust and stuff off and uh clean up these corners a little bit get my ground clamp hooked up weld this in and then i'm gonna make me a plate to lay over this i might come on down into here actually too and uh weld the outside of the plates drill some holes through it and fill them holes in like these are right here um so that's that guys uh but just a heads up if you keep your welder plugged in or you're using one of these welders or anything like that always make sure you unplug it from the wall when not in use i would have saved a thousand dollars if i just unpulled the plug right there that plug right there if i'd have just undone that and wrapped it around my tanks i'd have saved a thousand dollars and that's what makes me more sick than anything. So just do that, should be all right. Uh, learn from my mistakes, um, which every time I'm done welding, it will be unplugged now. Let's get started. All right, guys, uh, still a little warm. Been sitting about an hour, but got it all welded up. painted uh what i did was uh a plasma cut probably about a one inch hole for each spot spot <clears throat> and then i welded this top section up then took heated it up bent this down and then 
weld this on there uh, and then weld these two holes in so it should be strong now uh, it'd be a lot stronger than the, the original side it should be anyways but that's it guys that's my fix on this thanks like comment subscribe appreciate it